For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus saves and God he sent his son. God loved the world so much. No king, no priest could save us. So therefore, God sent his son as a baby into the world to die for our sins. Yes, his name is Jesus. So many people doubt Jesus. So many people want, knew Jesus, talked about Jesus. Now they're denying him. Jesus is real and Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his church. Yes. So yes, Jesus is real. And if you call upon the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. And if you confess your sins, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Bible says, you shall be saved. I'm paraphrasing, but you should be saved. So if you confess and you sincerely ask God to forgive you for your sins, everything you done did, and God, he will take it away and allow Jesus to come into your heart. But we must believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his son. Because he is coming back, just look at the world. Jesus is coming back. He's coming for his church. And you don't want to be left behind. No. You think this is worse? This, this is nothing compared to what's coming. That's why we have to stay rooted and grounded in the truth in God's word. And so many religions, doctrines out there. I belong to the body of Christ. People are like, what church you go to? I am the church. I belong to the body of Christ. We must live right. We must love each other. Jesus is coming back. You don't want to be left behind. Look at this world. It's nothing compared to when Jesus come back. Oh, you don't want to be left behind. Trust me. You don't want to be left behind. The Bible says... The dead in Christ go rise first, and those that remain, they're going to be caught up to meet Jesus. And I want to be ready, so daily I work on myself. Ephesians um, 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So thank God for grace. And thank God for mercy. If it wasn't for grace and mercy, we would not be here today. I would not be talking to you. So thank God for sending his son, Jesus, into the world for dying for my sins, your sins, the world's sins. And all we got to do, like I say, just ask God to forgive us, to come into our heart and live for him. How do we live for him? We put away that old man. We put that old man under subjection. That means the things, the sins that we used to do. I'm not saying I'm perfect. There is nobody perfect. There was only one perfect, and his name was Jesus. He was the only perfect one. And I also want to say, when we come to Jesus, sometimes people come to him broken, disgusted, angry, bitter, mad. But guess what? Once you pray and you're really sincere, you gotta be sincere. But when you're sincere, he'll take all that away. Yes, he will. Mm hmm. But daily, we have to work on ourselves daily. Daily. Yes, pray daily. Sincere. You have to have that pure heart. And Ezekiel talks about how to take that stony heart and make it a heart of flesh. Mm hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You want to see God? You want to see Jesus? Yes, and you know when somebody do you wrong and they come to you, they say, I apologize, I'm sorry. You know if they mean it, you know it, right? Yes.
pure, pureness of heart. And God knows our hearts. He knows when we mean it. Yes. We're to love the Lord with all our hearts. All our hearts. All our soul, mind. To love God. Yes, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And remember, pure. With a pure heart. Mm -hmm. And certain things, when Jesus come back, certain lifestyles I'm not judging but certain lifestyles God does not approve of he said in his word and once again blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God amen have a blessed week and I love each and every one of y'all I love y'all